Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. And uh, if you're subscribed, you might know that I am working on a t-shirt quilt. A t-shirt quilt that has different size blocks. We're adding lots of fun stuff to fill in the spaces. I've done a couple of videos. And uh, if you've missed them, I'm going to put the playlist for this little t-shirt quilt series in the description box below. So uh, the last few days, I have filled in all the empty spaces of this quilt top, and uh, everything is up on my design wall. So I'm going to show you a quick little walkthrough of everything we have on this quilt. We, of course, are featuring her t-shirts. I think there were 22 logos or 27 logos we were working with. And then in the empty spaces, I have sublimated her artwork. I have sublimated uh, some personal photos and uh, we've done some embroidery work, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, I've added some fabric borders around a couple of her t-shirts. And in today's video, uh, we're going to be starting to sew together this quilt top. I'm going to start in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to show you my plan of approach. Uh, on Inkscape, I'll show you the blocks and how I plan on uh, sewing them together. And then we'll do a speed walkthrough of piecing together that portion. I think it should be a lot of fun and I'm really excited to get started. Here we are at my laptop and I have Inkscape open and I have Everly's Quilt pulled up here on the screen. Now, let me just start by saying everything is colored teal. When I first started designing this quilt, uh, each of the individual blocks were colored the actual color of the shirt so that I could separate all of the colors and make sure that no two shirts that were the same color were side by side. Then as I cut out each one of the shirt blocks and it went up on my wall, I just colored them a solid color. In this quilt, I used teal and I changed the numbers of each block to orange. And that just represents and tells me that that block is cut. And uh, once all of my quilt top was colored teal, I know all of my t-shirts are in the quilt and all the spaces are filled. Now you'll see some white spots with words in it and some pictures. Those just represent the extra blocks that I've done as fillers. And those are also up on the wall as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, approaching a quilt with all of these different quilt blocks, I don't know that it much matters where you start. I usually like to start in the upper, either left or right hand corner. Uh, today, I, I've noticed a chunk of quilt that's going to be really easy to piece together and get us on our way to completing this quilt top. So we're going to focus in this video on the upper left hand corner corner of the quilt. So let me just zoom in here for a minute. Now I want you to see the little black lines that represents your seam allowances, right? That's where all of the edges of each one of the blocks land in the quilt. I want you to pay special attention to block 9, block 26, 14, 2, the purple heart sublimation, and then if you saw the video of the paint palette that I embroidered, that goes right above it. Once you have selected those six blocks, you will make a complete rectangle patch of this quilt, right? You would then have one solid seam on the right and one complete seam on the bottom of this section, right? So that's where we're going to start today with these six blocks. Uh, how I would approach piecing them together, you'll notice that right below block 9 and 26, there's a solid line that runs straight across the edge of the quilt. And what I'll do, let's just do this so we can focus on this section here. See that? This is the section we are working on. Right in the middle, once block 9 and 26 are pieced together right here, you're going to have a seam that runs right below it. And then you're going to have this section with blocks 14 to the purple heart sublimation and the embroidery block right above it. That will be a section. So we're going to start with 9 and 26. We'll piece those two together in that seam and we're going to set that aside. 
And then we will work on joining blocks 14 and block two right in this seam. And then we'll put that aside for a second because we're going to also then piece together the purple heart sublimation and the embroidery work right above it. There's a seam that runs right there. Once those two sections are joined, we will have a seam that fits right on the right side of block number two. We'll join that section. That'll complete this whole rectangle. And then to finish up today's video, we're gonna be piecing the seam right in the middle. And that's gonna give us, if you see the red outline, that will be one chunk of the quilt top put together. Now you'll see, even after that, we still have quite a bit to put together on this quilt. And I thought we would break up sewing together this quilt in different chunks of videos so that you could see uh, we're gonna have some partial seams in this quilt. I'd love to walk you through that. And uh, maybe this video will take away the scariness of doing a t-shirt quilt with different size blocks if you break it down into chunks like this. So let me go warm up my iron, turn on the sewing machine, and we're gonna start sewing. We're gonna get started with our first two blocks, blocks nine and 26. 26 is fun because I put a purple fabric border around that t-shirt. We'll pin those together and bring that over to the sewing machine and for all of my seams I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now because these two blocks do fall right on the very top edge of the quilt I did a little back stitch when beginning this seam. I like to do that uh, on all the seams that run along the edge of the quilt. Now we'll bring in blocks four and two right below nine and 26 and we'll sew that seam. We'll go give that a press. You'll notice I'm using a pressing cloth when I press my seams because of the interfacing on the back sides of my t-shirts. We can set that section aside and now we'll piece together the two blocks that go to the right of block number two. You'll see that little red box down in the left corner. Now when I embroidered the paint palette, I did put it in the hoop the wrong direction. So I'm gonna to have to add a fabric border to this block to bring it up to the right size, which was six and a half by four and a half. I had a jelly roll uh, piece that I think would look fantastic in that spot. So I'm just going to sew that on all four sides of this block. Squaring it up after I add the first two pieces, and then we'll add the left and right pieces. I cut those a little bit bigger because we're gonna be squaring up this piece anyways. So you'll see here I'm cutting my six and a half width of the block, and then we'll trim off the other sides so that this block is now four and a half inches tall. And now that it's the right size, we can join in these two pieces, the embroidery to the sublimation. We'll give that a press. And now that is one solid section. And so now it fits right next to the right side of block number two. We will sew that seam. and then give that a press. And now we have two sections of this piece of quilt, right? Nine and 26 are together, four and two, and the extra two blocks are together. And there's one seam that runs right in the middle. So I'll give that a good pin and we'll sew that seam. We'll give that a press, and now this is all one section. 
I usually like to press my seams from the back and uh, just figure out which direction they want to go in the easiest. Uh, I press my seams to the side on most of my quilts <laughs> and quilts with different size blocks. Uh, I just tend to press to whichever side is e easiest. So here we are, the six blocks for today's video are now one section. And I'll show you down in the left corner, all the teal still needs to be sewn together and we, the block of yellow is one big patch. So that's how I'm going to approach the rest of this quilt and I look forward to bringing you along. Thanks for hanging out with me and we'll see you really soon. Bye everybody.